Good evening and welcome everybody to the next episode of the FPV live stream. Sorry about that. Uh, tonight we are building from Multirotor Mania the uh, Multirotor Mania 225 with a full Multirotor Mania uh, electronics kit um, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, the, I've been flying uh, my, my own copy of the Multirotor Mania 225 for about two weeks now and uh, I've got and this, this is the one. This has my own electronics in it. Um, it's not all of the parts that we're going to use, but this thing is, um, it comes in at about 310 grams, but still produces, you know, 800, 900 gram, or grams of thrust per corner. So you're got, you've got high 9, 10 to 1 thrust to weight ratios on a 4 millimeter quad that can take a beating. I have destroyed this thing um, by smashing it against things. I've dropped it 20 feet onto concrete and it comes out of the other end just fine. So I am super excited about multi-rotor mania frames. Um, I've got two now. I'm probably going to pick up some more here in the future. Um, and I am super excited about it. <clears throat> the quad that we're building today uses the full multi-rotor mania electronics setup. And it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a crazy sweet quad. Um, uh, all of the parts that we're using today are available for um, are are available as part of a kit on multirotormania.com. And if you uh, if you use the coupon code BulbaFetFPV, um, you can get a twenty five dollars off of the price of two hundred ninety five dollars. So you're getting roughly um, $320, dollars worth of stuff for like two hundred and seventy five dollars. And uh, it's gonna it's a sweet kit. So uh, be excited about it. Um, and let's check it out. So, I, and I, I'm sorry for the delayed start. Uh, I'm a little bit, I was just kind of a little bit behind schedule and just trying to rush to get everything put together. So uh, I, I um, apologize for that. But um, let's get into what we're building here. I'm just gonna kind of randomly pull parts out here. Uh, I'm gonna switch over to this camera mode. This is a TS58400. This is a race band capable VTX. It's actually a 400 milliwatt VTX. That was kind of that's uh, what um, Multi Rotor Mania likes to use, and that's what we're using today. Um, I've been flying with one of these for the last couple days, and uh, it kicks butt. Um, uh, 32 channels, but it has race band, not the Fat Shark band, so it works great. So that's fine. Um, we have four of the Multi Rotor Mania 224 or 2204 um, by 2300 KV um, Airbots or Mini Titans. They are very, very powerful. I, these are actually the first 2204 motors that I bought and uh, they they flew great. I was only on three cell at that point, so I don't know how they're quite how they are on um, uh, uh, four cell, but I, I have to imagine that they're gonna be pretty impressive. I think they do about, um, a thousand grams per corner uh, on four cell with a five by four by three prop. Um, we've got four uh, multi rotor mania 20 amp Zeus ESCs. Uh, they are very similar to the little bees. They have um, BL Heli and one shot and all of that stuff flashed on them. Um, so, yeah, so there's all that. Those are great. We have uh, the multi rotor mania power distribution board. Um, on it is a variable regulator for voltage, so you could tune it to 12 volts or 16 volts or 3 volts or whatever whatever you need um, to power, like your LEDs, for example. Um, and it also has a 5 volt regulator for your flight controller and all of that stuff. Speaking of flight controller, this is the Multi Rotor Mania Dragonfly 32 flight controller. It is uh, an F1 board. It's got you know two UARTs and eight PWMs and channels and all that stuff. So it does a, you know, it, it is the go-to flight controller. Um, <clears throat> uh, I have a request to show the pigtail that I've soldered on here. Um, let me see if I've got another one that I can see more easily. So this is um, the 400 milliwatt VTX that we were talking about. And what I've done is taken a um, angled SMA adapter like this and just cut it right here. And it gives me a little bit, little tiny pigtail with some flex in it that I can use on the bottom of this instead of having all of the flex be in something like this. So with an angle mount, what happens is if for whatever reason your frame breaks or the, uh, um, 
antenna takes a big impact, it can snap right here on this SMA connector, and that sucks. So what I've done, I actually just did this like 20 minutes ago. I, I desoldered the SMA adapter there and soldered on a SMA lead. Well, actually this way. And essentially, let me get a pointy thing. Essentially, on this SMA connector, this middle piece is the signal and then all of the other four um, poles are grounding. So all you have to do is solder the outside part of the wire, uh, the coaxial cable to the ground and the inside to the signal. And now you have your own um, pigtail set up that you don't have to deal with and it won't break and it's not gonna put any stress on your VTX and it keeps you from having to do anything from breaking anything. And that's, and that's kind of the goal is how, how durable can we make these things? Um, and then I just put a little hot glue on it to kind of help hold it in place. Uh, but that's going to, you know, this is going to be a really nice clean build because I can just stick it up underneath. This is can be loose or I'm going to, I'm actually going to Velcro it to the top. Um, and that makes it so much better. Okay. That's the VTX. We have our frame, which is the multi-rotor mania 225. It's uh, four millimeters carbon fiber. Um, oh, by the way, is the uh, stream coming through all right um, in terms of frame rate and all that stuff? I've got a view of it open. It looks like it's okay. Um, I've got a little Velcro on here. We actually did um, some FPV setup on this uh, a couple um, days ago. You can find the, the link to that stream at the FPVlivestream.com um, to check it out. Uh, and yeah, so this is so this is the frame. Four millimeters of carbon fiber. I can't break it. The only thing that I've done so far is I've scuffed up the carbon a little bit on this corner from falling from 20 feet onto solid concrete, which had nothing to do with the frame, but it took that hit like a champ. Uh, let's see. Where's the other? I've got all of the mounting hardware. I just stuck it in a little tub here so that we had it all handy. Need one more of those things. This has a faceplate for um, non-HS 1177 cameras. So if you need to mount your camera without having access to the mounting holes that an HS 1177 provides, gosh dang it, there it is, then uh, you are you have an option. Um, I've got, this, so since this is an F1 board, you have to invert uh, signal from the uh, from an X4R S bus receiver. Um, and so I have myself an X4, X4R dash SB receiver here that already has the inversion hack done. Um, if you want to hear more information about that, um, I can make a post about it, or uh, you could also go check out uh, Oscar Liang's blog. He's got a lot of good details on how to make that happen. Um, but yeah, so the frame. So what you've got here is that you can mount your uh, FPV camera between these two standoffs. I've got them backwards like this and then the top frame the top of the frame will sandwich that and now you've got a really nice secure strong way to mount your fpv camera with limited hassle and if you've been here before to watch my um <laughs> streams you know how much i hate and love the hs 1177 all at the same time and this solution makes it real easy to get it to work right did i have that right yeah i think so Nope, I've got that backwards. It goes like this. <laughs> but it, whatever. We'll get there. Uh, yeah, so frame. Let's see, what else we got in here? I've got some battery straps. I've got some VTX gear. And I have an OSD. Hold on a sec. Yeah, so this is um, a Minim OSD from Multirotor Mania. Um, this guy is... Um, we, we worked with this last week, uh, not last week, two weeks ago, and we sh I showed you every single step that you need to take to uh, set this OSD up. Uh, I've take I took it off to take some pictures uh, for the live stream just because I needed all the parts kind of broken apart. Um, so we're going to really quickly put this back on the frame, but we're not going to demonstrate any configuration. If you want to see that, head back over to... Um, uh, 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 thefpvlivestream.com and you'll see some more details about that. Um, Multi-Rotor Mania hooked me up with some HQ 5x4x3 props for this build. And 
Oh, uh, we have a, an HS 1177 camera. Um, they sell these. Uh, they This one has the... Actually, I'm not totally sure. I hope that... I'm not sure if it's mounted on the top or the bottom. Normally, when you look at these, you can see based on the way the wording is, but this one's missing the wording apparently. Um, so I'm hoping that it's uh, top or bottom mounted and not top mounted based on comparing these two. This is just an old broken one. Um, but yeah, we'll see. <clears throat> so yeah, so HS1177, we have a 2.1 millimeter wide angle lens camera. Um, oh, where is my... Somewhere I have a Xiaomi Yi angle mount for the top of this thing. I think it's upstairs, so we'll cross that bridge um, when I come to it. So let's come back to the frame and get this build started. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, it's a bottom. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, do you guys have any questions before we get going? Um, I've got to do some setup here with uh, you know, just mounting stuff and all that kind of the boring parts of doing a build. Uh, but if you have any questions right off, let me know. Once again, all of this is available for like $50 off of listing price. Um, and it's gonna be a fantastically powerful fun to fly rig. Um, I have, I think I put somewhere in the description um, some DVR of myself flying this thing really fast. Actually, if you wait for tomorrow's video, you'll see me destroying a course with this um, and kind of breaking down what, what it is that I was doing. So, we've got the power distribution board there. Um, like I said, I've already, we, we kind of did a little bit of this on the live stream last week. Uh, so it, I might kind of rush through some of these, the power distribution setup and the OSD setup, but all of that, you can go back and see um, how I did that uh, at the fpvlivestream.com um, and see the, the OSD configuration that we did. Uh, let me see. One more of these. Good, I turned my soldering iron on. Where is my multimeter? There it is. My desk is currently a massive mess. I've been working on different um, different uh, projects here and there. Um, so one thing I always want to do before I start building is I want to double check to make sure that all of my polarity is cor correct on my power distribution board. So I, I'm pretty sure that it is because we already tested this. Um, on the stream a couple weeks ago. Let's see, can I see that in any way? Nope. There we go. Okay, so on this side we have the adjustable voltage out. So if we touch the ground and the voltage, we should see about 12 volts. Okay, so this is a really low battery. Let me find another battery here. Um, how about a four cell? Beep, beep, beep. Oh, I just saved that with my knees. <sighs> oh, the link in the description is wrong. The The link on fpvlivestream.com, click the banner, um, and the link there is correct. Um, but I will update the link a little bit later here. So voltage out and ground, and we see 12 volts regulated down from four cell battery. Then on the other side, we've got ground and VCC for five volt. And oops, if I could place these, and uh, so we're a little bit higher than five volts, but that's going to be just fine for um, doing the uh, powering any five volt equipment off of that. Um, and then, of course, on these other pads, we've got a straight LiPo battery. So you know, there's 15 volts. This one is at storage charge level. There's another 15 volts. So yeah, so that's that. <clears throat> then. The next thing that I usually do is mount up my motors uh, because I like to be able to see visually how long I need my wires to be. Audio is cutting out a little. It's fine now though. Okay, let me know if anything goes wrong with that. Stupidly, I did not yet put the tops to these motors on. Um, so while I'm working on that, uh, I wanna do a Q and A. If you guys have any questions that you wanna ask about this or multi-rotor mania or whatever, let me know because this is gonna be kind of boring. <clears throat> and people have suggested that I get music sometimes, but I keep forgetting. 
I want to see a Boba Fett special frame. You know what? I want to see a Boba Fett frame too. Multi Rotor Mania, can we set it up? What kind of frame would it be though? Like I really like five inch, I guess. But maybe I want to do something really unique. <clears throat> Just a flying carbon beard. What what ideas do you guys have for a Boba Fett special edition multi rotor mania frame? So right now I'm just putting the these motors come with uh, swappable um, uh, prop adapters, so you can put um, different ones on if you need different heights or whatever. Uh, the Kai Mike Boba Fett, are you coming to Drone Nationals in New York City? Uh, my goal is to be there. Um, obviously, you have to win your way into the multi GP um, championships, so I've got to win to get there. But if if we can find if we can find if I can find a way to uh, win, or if I need to go there as like a um, I don't know, like media, essentially, you know, just do some blogging and talking and interviewing and all that stuff. I will do my best to make that happen. So, um, that's basically what my goal is. You should put some Loctite in these prop adapters. Yes, I will come back and do that. Um, just, I just didn't want to spend too much time here on camera because I'm actually going to take this whole thing apart again and actually do a full, um, really nice, um, build guide. So for those of you that maybe want to get into FPV for the first time, um, between this live stream and the build video that will come out, um, you'll be able to, you will have no questions that you need to ask to get this whole thing done. So if you if you are if you are a first timer or someone that's new to flying and um, you are are nervous about doing your first build, between this thing and the um, entire and the and that build video that's going to be coming out, if you buy this kit, um, you will have a full 100% instruction manual to be able to build this thing out um, step by step all the way along. Sick, it would be nice to meet you there. Uh, names pronounced like Clam Mike. The Clam Mike. Yeah, I would love to meet you there as well. Blake Hale says, I almost met you at F3 Expo. Why didn't you? I'm not nervous about my first build. I'm nervous about picking the right parts. Well, that's why we put together a kit for you. Just buy it. That's what I did the first time, though. I, I bought it. The first thing that I bought was a kit, and it provide and it uh, made um, and it made for a really easy setup. I didn't have to fret. I just picked the part or I picked the kit, and they sent me everything that they knew would be compatible with one another. And that's what we've done here. So go grab this kit. It's going to be, this is going to be awesome kit. I'm going to put, I'll post some flight videos as soon as I get this thing in the air um, and tuned up and all that stuff. So look forward to that. Definitely uh, go ahead and subscribe. But this entire kit is at multirotormania.com um, or mrmrc.com. It's featured on the front page. Yeah, the stream will be posted as soon as we're done, um, so you can come back and follow along again, like a cooking show. <laughs> the kid is sitting in my cart just wondering how the Motors ESC compares to the one I was recommended. What were you recommended? But, I mean, these are strong, they're tough, they're light, actually. They are lighter than, like, Emacs Red Bottoms, for example. And they are, um, I mean, they produce a kilogram of thrust per corner with the right props with five inch props. So, I mean that you're creating a, like a roughly 320 gram quad that is capable of producing 400 grams. So you divide that out and you start getting some pretty serious power. So 
this 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 will be just fine especially for a first build so grab it yeah it's gonna be awesome <clears throat> yeah this is a, this is a kit that is very capable of winning races these so you you mentioned the little b20 amp escs uh there is not much difference between these and them uh, so y you will not be disappointed with these ESCs. Um, and then these these are not as powerful as the Emacs Red Bottoms, no. But the uh, the uh, they will um, sorry they are a lot more efficient than the Red Bottoms. So you'll get a little bit longer flight time for a race. You know that ends up lasting three minutes. You're not going to blow through your whole battery just in that amount of time. So. Little B is a four letter word in this chat. So yeah, so let's uh, get these motors mounted up on the frame. To do that, I'm gonna use the flat bottom screws because I don't like the ones that come with motors and I need them to be less long. Let's see, I need three of those ones. Okay, where's my... The Zeus 20 amp is the same ESC as the Little B20, identical ESC, zero difference. So they're not, but if you purchase them from Multirotor Mania, you'll have much better customer support and all of that stuff. So it's, you, 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 they are just more available to help answer questions and stuff. I talk to um, the guy that's chatting Multirotor Mania every day, um, and he is an am amazing resource. Ah, sorry. Ugh. Like not finding the right length screws here. I mixed them all together. It was my own stupid fault. Okay. Trying to line up my motor holes for some reason I'm having trouble with it. <laughs> so I'm blind. There we go. Tweedlederp is circadian. All right, first motor mounted. I mean, look at that. It looks so good on there. Like, and that thing is not going anywhere, unsurprisingly. We are very close to those windings. Next up, I guess I could probably just point this up a little bit. This is not a ZMR, this is a Multi-Rotor Mania 225. It's a custom uh, single uh, plate frame uh, that they've developed. Um, and it is much, much more capable than most ZMRs out there. Though they do sell a very similar quad to the ZMR that's also a 250. Quad, uh, but it's again much stronger. Okay. And I swear by the strength of this because I have not been able to break it yet. Try as I might, I am not very nice to my quads. Okay, two motors on. We're gonna be cutting back a lot of these, that wiring, but we'll just leave it there for now. <clears throat> um, while we're kind of working on this, uh, I always appreciate if you guys wouldn't mind uh, 
giving us a shout out on social media somewhere, maybe posting on uh, some Facebook groups or whatever your favorite thing is. Uh, we love the extra help. Um, it, it helps. It genuinely actually does help sustain uh, this show and any future episodes just because if we can't raise awareness and find people to help, we're not really executing our job. So if you wouldn't mind, definitely give this a share and let's see if we can get some more people in here. I'm dropping screws like crazy. Okay, three motors on, one more to go. Okay, getting the kit. What do I need to add other than the extra props and batteries? Uh, I recommend getting a few batteries if possible, if it suits your budget, just because then you don't need to wait hours to charge between flights. Um, but you will also need a receiver, which unfortunately they do not carry. Um, so you'll have to find that somewhere. Um, and you know any tools that you're gonna need to do the construction. I don't know what you have already, but Every, other than that, this everything everything is in that kit for it to fly. And do FPV and all that stuff. Sometimes I'm just blind as a bat and I can't find my, I can't line up my screw holes. What in the world? There's that, there's that. That's the one, okay. There we go. We carry, but it's out of stock. Oh, so they do carry receivers, but they don't have any rate at this moment. Okay, four motors mounted up. The next thing that I usually do is start wiring up ESCs. <clears throat> Let me unwrap one of these. Okay, so the way that I do electronics is direct soldering everything. Um, the you are just fine to use pin headers. Um, they will not cause any performance decrease except maybe in the terms of like a slight amount of weight. Um, but I find that direct soldering is more maintainable, even though you have to desolder things and whatnot to get them back on if you break something. Um, just because it's more fire and forget. You can just kind of do it once and then never have to worry about it ever again. You don't have to think about it anymore. Wait, who's given magic smoke? Not me. Hasn't happened yet, knock on wood. And it's not going to tonight. All right, so what I did there was take off the motor wires from the ESC because they're redundant. We've got a ton of extra wire over here so we can use that to set up the ESCs. So then what I do, actually, yeah, I'm gonna leave that the way it is is I actually just tape the ESC right to the frame for now. I'll probably come back and do something a little bit more elegant, um, but I just want it to be held in place while I'm measuring out the wires and getting everything exactly the right length. So 
So not the prettiest thing in the world, um, but it's isolated from, it's both isolated from the carbon fiber because there, I left the heat shrink on that's underneath it and it's going to be held in place and not move anywhere um, while I'm fiddling with it. How can you tell the top from the bottom of the ESC? Um, if you look at the ESC, all of the solder pads are on the top, except for the signal ones, which are on the bottom. So most pads are on the top. And there's also a picture and stuff, and that picture is always going to be in the same spot. <clears throat> all right. So we want to have just a little bit extra wire because we need to cut off some of the shrink. So we're going to go to there and cut it right at that spot. Boom. Tons more motor wire. I've got so much motor wire sitting around I don't even know what to do with all of it. Let me see if I can get this light in here a little bit closer. I saw your worst ever maiden video. What do you think about it? Well, uh, that was pretty hilarious. Like, I mean, there's nothing you can do in a situation like that but laugh. Um, for those that haven't seen it, um, you can go check it out on my YouTube channel. But I made it 11 seconds into a battery and my quad landed totally submerged into a puddle. Um, but it's okay. I've literally plugged it in. Um, a couple days later, after drying it out in some uh, unused cat litter, and uh, then put... So what I'm doing here is tinning up the wires. Um, but yeah, I, I plugged it in and flew it. No problems. V video worked fine. I think one ESC might be slightly um, hurting because it's actually dropping out back right. Um, and so I think that one of those ESCs is, is toast. Um, so I'm going to try swapping it out and see if that reduce, removes the problem. All right. So now what I'm doing is I'm just going to direct solder each of these lines to this ESC. Oh, wait, hold on. One important thing to do is to add a little bit of your own solder to your pads on your ESC. Um, the solder that comes often has a cold joint and doesn't uh, stick very well. So if you, you always want to just add a little bit of your own so that um, you can trust the joints that you're creating. And then you can just grab your wire, solder it right on. Grab the next one. And grab the final one. So now we have got this nice maintainable system here. Um, all ready to go. I just want to redo that one, I'm sorry. Voila. Okay, so that motor is wired up there. Rice also does work for Okay, so now we need to run the wires to the PDB. <clears throat> and we have a positive lead here and a negative lead there. So if we, so we just want to make sure that we get these wires the right length that we want them, and then just go ahead and cut. So I'm just going to use this to score it so that I know where to cut. <clears throat> and then just strip off a little bit of the shielding. All right, and then I'm going to tin the wires. So just by giving a little solder to them, if I heat the wire and heat the solder and get a little bit, get those nice and wet, it's going to make it really, really easy to make that joint on this power distribution board. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the pads. I'm going to get them real nice and wet. 
And then all we have to do, put positive to positive. And negative to negative. And voila, that motor is ready for power. Does that PDB have an LC filter? It does not. Okay, so one down, three to go. Uh, we'll do. We'll save the signal wire for a little bit later. Uh, before I forget about it, I'm actually just gonna stick this guy on here. I've got a little bit of Velcro. Because um, I want the motor wires to go over it instead of under it. So just while I'm placing my wires, I want to remember that I don't want things in the way. Um, and once again, if you want to learn more about the OSD and stuff, um, you can go check out the previous video on how to get it all wired up and hooked up and configured and all that stuff. It's uh, There's a lot of really good information there, and there will be more details to follow. Uh, but So this is just the um, uh, battery LiPo voltage um, checker cable. That I'm soldering in. All right, got that out of the way. What lens is included in that kit? I believe it is a 2.8, um, 2.8 millimeter lens by default. All right, next motor. Audio is kind of crackling. Is this any better? I reset the microphone. I'm still talking in case um, you guys need more. If 2.8 isn't available when you check out, um, they're pretty easy to get a hold of. So, yeah. All right, let me know if the audio crackles again. I'll just reset it again. Sweet. Okay, once again, we're just going to get these motor wires right off of here. Get these extra wires out of the way. Iron temperature is hot. I don't have a, um, uh, a, a iron that allows you to set voltage. Um, it's the 40 watt um, Weller soldering iron. Uh, I bought it, I got it from Amazon. Um, and I just set it to the five setting and never touch it again. And I just use it on the same heat at all times. Um, I am not uh, somebody who knows much about electronics beyond quads and just kind of what I've learned from experience here. So I don't, um, I don't actually, I don't know my details very well. And so like what temperature should I be soldering at is not a question that I am equipped to answer, unfortunately. That being said, if you have a Weller 40 watt from Amazon, you can set it to five and it's perfect. <laughs> or it's worked really well for me anyway. Double O asks, what is the measurement in comparison to lenses? I know it's with regards to FOV, but is 
eight a measure of diameter no it's a measure of uh focal length it's the distance i think from the aperture to the lens or something like that or um but yeah and that determines how low of a field of view you have so the higher or the lower the millimeter distance is the um the lower the distance is, the wider the field of view is going to be, and the higher the distance, the tighter the field of view is going to be. So like a like a 150 millimeter lens or something like that is going to be um, really, really, really uh, focused and um, zoomed in. Okay, we almost forgot to tin our wires here again. What would you, multi-rotor mania, what would you recommend for a beginner racing freestyle quad? This. This would be perfect to start um, your uh, freestyle with. Like this, this will have power. This will have durability. It will also be very light compared to other frames on the market. Like this is much lighter than the Alien, for example, and it's forty dollars. So um, yeah, I if if you're looking to get a quad, that's a good racer um, and a good freestyler. Has some power and is nice and light and all those features. This is going to be an awesome selection. Um, and I, I say that not as someone that's been working with Multi-Rotor Mania, but as someone that owns one and races with one. I got to tin this up a little bit. And I don't, yeah. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Multi-Rotor Mania is not paying me to say this or anything like that. I genuinely... I'm in love with my Multi Rotor Mania 225. Um, it is a fantastic quad for the price and strong and all that stuff. All right. The 225 does fit a 5.5 inch prop, so you're halfway between five and six, or between uh, six and five inch props. So if you wanted that longer prop, you're gonna get a little bit more thrust and a little bit more speed for uh, racing. But if you need to be more agile, you can run the uh, a standard five inch prop and you know really go hardcore on your freestyle stuff. So, I mean, it's you have the ability to decide how you wanna kit it out and fly it. Um, and it's not gonna let you down either way. Does that make sense? There's a whole bundle on the front page. Double O asks, no heat shrink? Um, the heat shrink is on there. All I did was cut off enough to uh, access the motor pads. So the heat shrink is on there just with the motor pads exposed. And then when I finish it up, what I'll do is just cover up the motor pads with um, a little bit of electrical tape and it'll be fine. This is, no, this is, I would prefer this to an alien. It's more durable. It's not an X shape, but it, because it has the wide stance, the 225 stance, it actually feels a lot like some of the X quads I've flown. Um, including XBRs, multi-rotor manias, aliens, all that stuff. So, you know, even though it's not, it is an H quad, it feels very similar to a lot of the X quads that I've flown. No reason to afford an alien. Exactly. That's my philosophy. If you're going to be hurtling this thing through the air at 80 miles an hour, you want something that's going to not break the bank when you, when you crash it, not if. And you want something that is durable and replaceable, honestly. I mean, if you don't break your frame, I mean, regardless of what frame it is, you're going to break it eventually. I've tried and to break this one yet, but I haven't managed yet. And I'll let you know when I do and what it took to do it. But, well, place an order. Give me a few minutes so I can start regretting spending the money. You won't regret it. Speed Addict is even more overpriced. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so we've got two motors done here in terms of the power system. We've still got to do the signal, obviously. 
uh, but we got positive to positive, negative to negative, negative to negative, positive to positive. So we're set so far. <sighs> the kit seems a good price. I am just not sure I should be investing all this money yet or not. Yeah, you should. You really should. It's so much fun. You will never be bored ever again in your entire life. Okay, we need another ESC. ESC, ESC. Okay, we're gonna strip some more heat shrink here. How many frames have you broken? Um, I'm not gonna count ZMRs because ZMRs are fragile, um, but I've probably broken five of them. <laughs> but they're really cheap, so it's kind of okay, and you can replace every single part pretty easily. I have broken a Q, both a QAV 210 and 180. Um, I have broken parts of an XBR. I have broken tons of ZMRs. Um, I'm trying to remember what else. I, I think that might be it, actually. Oh, I've broken Uber Design 220s. Just let me know if you guys want to uh, see anything in particular that I'm working on here. Breaking frames is fun because you get to try something new. Does last week's quad fly after the splash? Yes, it does. I actually flew it for just like a half a, ba a, half a battery before this because I wanted to test out some tweaks that I made to it, including a fun little zip or pigtail like this I have now on that thing. There you go, Patrick. Patrick, these are uh, multi rotor mania mini Titan 225 or 2204 2300 kV motors. That was a little almost too much cut. Will this be up after you are done? Yes, it is. Yes, it will. It will be at this same link. And you can always go back and find other live streams at thefpvlivestream.com. Oh, I should plug Facebook too. Um, if you go to Facebook and search for the FPV live stream, um, you should uh, go and like that Facebook page to get uh, regular updates about um, new episodes and announcements and things that are going on. Giveaways, we're going to start doing a lot more of those, I think, here in the near future. So you should go like... Um, the FPV live stream on Facebook, because uh, that's going to be, I think, one of my best sources for just kind of being able to share tidbits of information with you guys. So if you're interested in hearing more as things happen, uh, go check it out. Have you used those motors before any good? Yes and yes. Um, they, they do a lot of thrust. They uh, do not want to break. Um, this frame protects them very well, too. Um, and they're not going to overheat because they have lots of good um, cooling features and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, these are these are great motors, um, especially for a beginner. Um, they're not quite as again they're not quite as powerful as the um, uh, as some other motors out there, um, but they're going to do an awesome job, especially for someone that wants to do their first racing quad, and that's this one. 
please keep in mind that some people do not use Facebook. What do you recommend as an alternative to Facebook then? <laughs> Multi-Rotor Mania, you ship to the Netherlands, right? I think so. Free shipping right now, or is that free national shipping? Also, you're awake in the Netherlands right now? What time is it? Jeez. All right, I'm going to run this one like that. And this one, I guess I'll have to go over and through like that. Two twenty-five in the morning. I guess that's not horrible. You not have work tomorrow or something? Speaking of beef brush board, there's the beef. Yep, he's here. Okay, I'm gonna do the negative first because it's gonna get in the way of the positive. this to kind of bend the right way so it stays inside the frame and out of the way of any props or anything. And then I'm going to run the positive one right over top of it. But I want to avoid the, po uh, the OSD because I want to be able to access those pads nice and easy. So I'm just going to kind of fold this down a little bit. Not all of us go to bed at grandma o'clock, says the guy who bailed on me because he fell asleep on the couch. Okay, so three motors done in terms of power system again, um, and one to go. Yeah, again, once again, coupon code is BulbaFedFPV to get 25% off of everything that you see here um, for a pretty sweet build. <clears throat> okay. Final motor. Um, Multi Rotor Mania team, what version of BL Heli is on here and what? settings have been turned on. I forgot to double check before the stream. Can we have FPV of the cat? Uh, no, but she's currently sitting in my gear bag down here. Kira, go away. Can you see her? Nope, hold on. Ugh. There's a kitty. She's sitting in my FPV bag, and there's a dog. Here. What's that? What's this? Come here. What's that? Burp, burp. <laughs> okay. BL Heli 14.4, we calibrate the endpoints to 1100 to 2000 and enable damp light. Awesome, perfect. So, so this has the most up-to-date BL Heli settings, so you can just plug them in and not worry about having to flash your ESCs and all that crap. Um, you can just set it up and roll, it's great.
thank you on the dog. I love I love both my dog and my cats. I have two of them. The other one's a little bit more shy. I don't know where she is right now. This is the dog is Kira. The um, cat that you saw in the picture is called Bobbles. Uh, she has like the cat version of um, cerebral palsy. So she kind of uh, is a little bit unstable on her feet. And it's kind of really stinking adorable. Um, and then the other cat who's the, actually the biological mother of the one that you saw of Bobbles is named Catalin named after Catalin Stark, whom, spoiler alert, we don't take to any weddings. Does the FC allow for pass through to ESC programming? Yes. Someone wants to repeat the coupon code. It's in the bottom left corner. Uh, it's Bulbafet FPV. Did I say the biological mother of Kira? I meant Bobbles. Uh, I've gotten a couple uh, super sneak peeks at the F3 board, and it's awesome. So if you're interested in an F3 um, and interested in buying it for Multirotor Mania, just keep an eye out. It's going to be freaking sweet. Well, got to go. It's been interesting. Sleep well, go to school, stay in school, all that fun stuff. Come back, check out the rest of the stream. And uh, you've still got 23 hours to buy... Uh, this kit so go take out a loan or whatever you need to do and get a hold of it because it's going to be great but thanks for stopping by did I tin these? I thought I did that doesn't have anything on it Good. He's kidding. Don't take out a loan. Eh, I don't know if I'm kidding that much. I donate plasma to support my quad habit. Yeah, that that's a good idea, actually. multi rotor mania. I have a bone to pick with you. Where are the orange battery straps? Hyph has a weird orange addiction fetish thing. <laughs> You're the one. If $250 requires you to take out a loan, in my opinion, you should reevaluate whether you need, to, you need this kit right now. A lot of people say the same thing about crack cocaine, and that doesn't stop them. Usually they don't qualify for a loan, so. <clears throat> I ordered my first 250 on March 20th and it still hasn't made it to the States. Well, if you order this from Multirotor Mania right now, you can probably have it on Monday, probably. I don't know how shipping goes over the weekend, usually. Just saying.
And then you'll have two quads. Okay. Look at that. We've got four ESCs and motors all wired up to their hopefully proper ports. Um, Um, and yeah, so what I'm going to do, do you have a Patreon or somewhere we, we, where we can donate to your awesome videos? Uh, I do not. Um, there are, um, some branding changes that will happen soon. Uh, so if you're at all interested in that, um, just kind of keep an eye out on the channel and uh, stuff like that will become obvious in the next little while. Um, Okay. All right. Sorry. I just wanted to read through a couple comments there. Sometimes it's kind of hard to keep up and work on the build all at the same time. Okay. Next. We need to... What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to power up everything to make sure that we didn't get any um, uh, messed up uh, wiring or anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through all of the um, connections here and make sure double check that everything is right that all of the polarity is the right way um, so we'll just kind of step through nice and slow and make sure that everything is good uh, positive to positive negative to negative positive to positive negative to negative positive to positive negative to negative negative to negative positive to positive positive to positive the dog is chasing her tail right here Kira, Kira, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stupid head. <laughs> All right, and finally, positive to positive, negative to negative. Okay, so now I am. Now that I have double checked all of this, I am confident that we can power this up without there being. Uh, any major explosions or anything. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. Prepare for magic smoke in five, four, three, two, one. None. Woo! <laughs> Sorry, everybody's ears. Dog head to tail, yeah. She's uh, she's a bit of a derp, but that's okay. We love her anyway. <clears throat> VTX. Okay, so I'm just gonna wire this thing in here while I'm thinking about it because it's just in my way. Let's see, this is camera. This is camera. This is way too short. Okay, I'm gonna take that off because we gotta fix that. <clears throat> Where is the drama I crave? Yeah, I know. I still haven't had a smoke on the... Uh, how do you get your dog to not go totally crazy when you fly? Um, what makes you think she doesn't go, to go, go totally crazy when I fly? No, she actually chases it around. It's uh, our, my favorite form of exercise for her. So I don't have to do anything. <laughs> okay. Next... I am going to add voltage outlines for the flight controller. Um, so the, to power the flight controller, the Dragonfly 32, um, you need to uh, provide power uh, 5 volts to the uh, voltage in lines, which is going to be right here. Now, the, um, now what I'm going to do is set up from the power distribution board because once I put this on there I don't want to have to go back to the board um, I'm going to put the some 5 volt out lines for the flight controller I'm going to use some nice small wire for it because it, they're pretty small pads um, that are kind of a pain to work with so 
here's some nice tiny tiny wire i'll just give it you know that much don't need a lot um and then i'm going to mount the board this way let's see is that right is that the way i want to do it so that i can get the um usb port without being in the way of this thing then because if you look at the bottom the way that multi-rotor mania is pointing is forward we're going to have to change in the flight controller software the firmware to point it sideways so um i gotta strip this wire off a little bit And I'm going to tin these wires up. So we've got voltage out, and we already verified. Actually, that's 12 volts. <laughs> so we've got voltage out here, and this is the 5 volt line. We already verified earlier with our multimeter that. Um, it's giving the correct voltage. So all we have to do is hook up a line to it and we can run that to our uh, power or flight controller. So there's the voltage. And I gotta tin this ground wire still. And there's the ground. So now I'm going to run that back here towards the end of the flight controller that has the power on it. And if you look, you know, this is just going to fold over right here and plug in. Does that make sense? Huh, it wouldn't let me use the code. I'll try again. Thanks. Um, can someone help Cosma14 with the code? Paul actually did a plug to my wife to allow me to up my FPV budget. Now, when he says plug, he means I talked to her. I didn't uh, plug her. <clears throat> okay, next. So, so now we have this available here to make that connection. I'm gonna tin. I'm gonna cut and tin these real quick right now before I forget about it. I love the delayed reaction. Like, I have to wait for a few seconds to see you guys laughing at my joke or whatever. So it's always a little bit awkward. I'm kind of, like, sitting here, like, waiting. <laughs> when are they, they going to see it? When are they going to see it? My girlfriend just lost it. Oh, man. <laughs> Does... Do, do. Naked Frog loves his Multi-Rotor Mania 225. Yes, it is. Uh, um, it's an awesome quad. Okay, what's next? Um... Let's start running lines for the uh, 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 motors, the PWM. So on the back of this flight controller, um, let me, oh, not that one, this one. So what comes with this quad is this nice handy, um, apparently they got a new printer since this one got printed because you can't hardly read the things on it um, but on the so if, if I mount this the same way with the USB port sticking out the side then I know that these are the PW on no wait these <laughs> sorry these are the PW on input and these are the voltage or these are the RC channel out so I actually want to be running my power up there not to here I don't know why I got that messed up. Oops. 
So I am going to, I guess these, these are fine. They're just a little bit on the long side probably. But anyway, so on this side, we have, let's again look at our thing. This side over here is motor six, and this side over here is motor one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six across the board like that. So we need to mount or wire each of our motors to their respective ports on this flight controller. Um, so what I'm gonna do is in a previous video, I did the my, my wrapping method. Doesn't matter where the power goes in. Oh, I actually didn't know that, that's awesome. Um, yeah, go to thefpvlivestream.com and check it out. I'm sorry that uh, I have that messed up right now. So, pin four for us, bus. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, with this being six and this being one, I've got to run. This is motor one down here. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. This is motor one on this end. I still can't see it. This is motor one because this is the back right motor. And I have to run this cable all the way through and underneath and come back over. So the way that I'm going to do this just kind of my own way is that I'm gonna run it down the side here and I'm gonna wrap it back up over like this and I think that usually that makes for a pretty clean build and it's usually pretty easy to maintain that way so we'll, we'll cut it right there and this is why I left the flight controller off so that it's not in the way while I'm trying to build it that's why I didn't solder anything straight to it yet. Can I buy parts individually and still get the discount? I think you have to have the um, kit in your cart to use the discount. Boba Fett, is that a three or four millimeter plate? This is a four millimeter plate. Um, I have the four millimeter version on my own electronics. And that quad with every single uh, component here, they're different. Um, some of them, are, like I have different motors, for example, and a slightly different power distribution board. Um, but I have gotten it to 310 grams all up weight, which is actually really, really, really good for uh, a four millimeter quad. So this is gonna be roughly the same length. So I'm gonna cut it there. Uh, punk, if you want to use thefpvhangout.com, uh, that's just like a standard or uh, an open uh, video chat room that you can use at any time if you need to jump in there and help somebody out. Uh, so that's there just as long as you know. Wait, how much all up weight? Dry weight, it's 310. All up, it's uh, like 450 with a uh, 1300 milliamp four cell. So this is motor three back here. Yeah. And this should be motor four. One, two, three, four. I don't know why I always forget, but I do. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set this down and we're gonna solder on our first direct wired things here to the flight controller. So first thing we wanna do is tin all of the pads. Awesome, can you repeat that? The FPV Hangout.com. Six hundred eighty grams, ouch. Actually, I just remembered something that we're going to do before. Okay, so I've got all of those tinned, so it's going to be easier to solder onto that. Um, the thing I forgot was that I need to put this cable here 
back on. Nope, not that one. Where is it? Rut row. There it is. I need to put this cable back on, which uh, connects the flight controller to the OSD. So if the OSD is sitting here, we've got positive, let's see. Where's my OSD schematic? Night Delbert. Paul, is your solder fan on? Looks like you're inhaling that shit. I hold my breath when I'm soldering <laughs> and then breathe out a long uh, breath when I finish up. Um, so TX to RX, five volt ground. So the ground is on this side, TX to RX is on this side. So we'll put it on this way. Okay. Then the, the, the holes are here for the uh, um, connection to the uh, flight controller. And so we have TX RX 5 volt ground, ground being the closest one to the USB. So this right here is the ground line. <clears throat> I need something to hold this up. Even though ground is ground, you still need to run the ground from the ESC. Uh, I just do by habit. I've had some problem with, problems with not doing it. Um, so I just kind of always err on the side of putting it on. I probably, based on how much soldering I do here now, I should probably invest in some soldering health equipment, um, but I have not done so. Okay, that's ground. This is positive. stick I gotta get some more I gotta tin that a little bit better okay and then we need to reverse TX and RX okay Ground 5 volt RX. And once again, all of this stuff is available in a previous episode. Um, so if you're confused by what I'm doing, uh, go check that out after this. <laughs> Need to put the yellow one on. Next. At thefpvlivestream.com. Uh, Punk asks, Paul, do you know about the butter challenge? Um, I do know about the butter challenge. I have not worked on an entry because I am just out of time. And I will not have time to get it in. Um, but yeah, if you go check out Multirotor Mania's Facebook page, uh, you can see uh, that they're doing a, a competition in which you um, mold a quad out of no more than two sticks of butter. And if you have the best one, 
uh, you will be qualified to win a um, full quad build, a full uh, multi-rotor mania 250, I believe. Um, but yeah, so you should, if you have any artistic talent or whatever, um, you should go check that out, make a donation of $5, 100% of which is going to charity and have the chance to win, um, a fully built, fully tuned quad from multi-rotor mania. Sorry, you just see my hands here. I'm just trying to make sure I got those right wires. Okay, so I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with three actually because I want it out of the way. With monitor and radio, like fully everything you'll ever need to get started with FPV. So like, I I actually tried to get my uh, father-in-law to enter because he is um, an artist and uh, is a huge fan of RC as well and has not yet uh, gotten himself a FPV quad. Um, though he does have his hoops on that he flies around all the time. He actually was the, f he actually bought me my first hoops on, so. He's the one that I blame for all of this. And the one that I shift the blame to when my wife complains. Okay, looking good so far. Uh, I'm with them on the standoffs. I've stripped out a couple and they always come loose during flight. So I, I hate to say that, but I have used other standoff gear that is much, much better. Okay, next we need to run motor two, which is this one. Cut it off right there. So I need to cut those a little bit shorter. Okay, three motors, 100% wired, one to go. Dude, I wait 30 minutes for it to set.
Stink. Okay. Ground line. And positive line. All right. That there is a fully wired, fully flyable mini quad. Not counting, oh wait, hold on. We gotta do the power. Just kidding. <clears throat> so we can use these power ports, it sounds like. Do the ground first. And now the positive. Bing. Oh no, that's obnoxious. Let me grab those tweezers. Ugh. Jam the rest of this extra wire down under here. I'm gonna jam it down under, if you know what I mean. I never said this was a family friendly show. <clears throat> you know what? <sighs> we made a mistake. I have to, um, we have to connect the FPV system to this. Uh, but I made the mistake of putting on the flight controller before wiring up those uh, extra um, uh, cables. So, so uh, yeah, let's um, power this up, I guess. Double check connections again. We've got voltage, 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 voltage. All those look clear. Ground. Ground, 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 those all look fine. Voltage in to voltage. Let me move this out of the way. We made a mistake, yeah, sorry. I talk about myself as though I'm two people. Oh, good, we can move this around a little bit. Ground to ground, voltage to voltage. <clears throat> and then we have the OSD wired up correctly. And we already checked all the motors and powered it up, so we know that that works. So. Yeah, we're good. Let's uh, power it up and make sure that everything boots up correctly and uh, hope for magic smoke for your guys' sake. <laughs> All right, magic smoke in five, four, three, two, one. None. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. It's all working so well so far. Next thing we'll do is uh, connect the computer and um, make sure we got all the motor directions and stuff correct. I gotta plug in my USB cable here. Sorry, one second. Ugh. If you guys want to see clean flight, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to really quick flash this and set up the motor tab. <clears throat> Any other questions in the meantime? Firmware flasher. Oh, yeah. Um, load firmware. Beta flight. Oh, I don't have the right one. I gotta go download it. Um, B E T A. Beta flight. That's how we roll in the Shire. I've never heard that one before, actually. I mean, I know what the Shire is, but show us. Some of us are newbies. Okay. 
Uh, let me switch over to desktop mode here. Are you doing LEDs? Uh, not tonight. Sorry. Desktop. Okay. Hey, look, it's you guys. Uh, okay, so over here we've got Betaflight 2.5.4 is what I'm going to pull down, I think. Yeah, and we're going to grab the Nase Hex, which is what you need for the... Um, uh, Dragonfly 32. Save. Let me pull Clean Flight over here. If you guys have any questions about this as I go, let me know. I might move a little bit quickly. Firmware Flash. I'm going to load local firmware and pull the. Oh, where did that download to? That was the wrong spot. Oh well. Blink. Documents. Pictures. Quadcopters. Branding. Oh my gosh, where'd it go? Like literally, what did I just do with that? There it is. Open. There we go. Open. Uh, I'm not going to do beta flight 2.6 because I have not tested it out myself on my own gear. Um, so I want to just um, stick with 2.5 for now. Um, but yeah, so once you load that in there, you can just click flash and, um, and it just thinks through. Um, one thing that we, I kind of skipped over, but was noted by multi rotor mania was that, uh, the, you cannot connect or flash to the flight controller when the flight controller is connected to the OSD. Um, and so you have to make sure that you pull that out as you go. Okay, so that's flashed, and then we can just connect right to it. And we're spinning. Calibrate. Oh, it's because the compass is on. This one has a compass on it. Set Barrow Hardware equals one. No, set Barrow Hardware equals off. Set, what was that command? Set, god dang it. All right, can you do this in the configuration tab yet? How do you turn off Barrow and Magneto? <laughs> I just want to turn it off. I thought it was set barrow hardware equals one equals off equals off equals one. What the deuce? <laughs> Invalid value dumps set. Barrow, hardware, set, Barrow, hardware equals off. Oh, shoot. Invalid value. What the deuce? Equals none. Hey, set. Okay, what was the uh, compass? Is it just compass? Set mag hardware equals none. 
save. There we go. Thank you guys so much. Set ACC hardware equals off. Or is this also none now? Okay. All right. Now we're now we build a run of loop time of five hundred. Okay. So what I did there. I'm um, sorry. I just kind of was wanting to get through that. So <clears throat> with an F1 board, uh, and I'm going to go over to this for a second. So with an F1 board, you want to, um, if you want to run a low loop time, which means your communication between the flight controller and the ESCs is as fast as possible, you need to turn off your gyro accelerometer, mag mag magnetometer, magnetometer, I don't know what it is, and barometer, um, so that all of the processing power can be juiced back into running that faster cycle time. Uh, that's just kind of the rules behind how to use F1 boards and updated versions of Betaflight. I don't know why really more than that, um, but that's what we just did. Um, okay, so mm, we're gonna go to the motors tab and it should have automatically done it when you change loop time. Well, I actually didn't change loop time yet. Uh, let's just set this now to loop time 500, and that will enable to kilohertz mode. Yeah, there we go. Save and reboot. And we'll see in the bottom left corner here that the cycle time is now 500 and all of our stuff is turned off. <clears throat> all right, motors tab. I'm gonna connect the battery now. And I'm gonna switch back over to this. And I'm gonna say, I understand. And now what I'm gonna do is just slide up each motor and make sure that they're all set to the right port. So this is motor one, and we got motor one, and it is spinning the wrong direction. So we've got to reverse that. Um, and so for this, what I'll usually do is just use a piece of paper to keep track of what needs done. Really simple diagram. And then I need to reverse this one. All right, motor two. Okay, we have the right motor for motor two, and it is also spinning backwards. So we've got to reverse that one. I'm not gonna do all of the uh, configuration right now. Okay, this is motor three, and we got the right motor, and it is spinning the right direction. And on motor four, Oop. it is spinning backwards but it is on the right port so we've got three of these that we have to reverse <clears throat> which is very easy um, so we'll go oh we're already on this one so I have to reverse three out of four motors so unplug your battery un unplug your flight controller and then all you have to do to reverse motor direction and you can do this through BL Heli Suite, but I actually prefer this method because, in my opinion, it's faster and just easier. Is um, you literally just have to swap any two ESC um, to motor connections. One. Yep. This wire is too bent. That one's done. I'll do this one. Of course, I would get three of them wrong. I know that there's a general rule of thumb when it comes to these, but I'm actually don't know what it is. Um, but it's not always the case. But honestly, it's so easy to switch motor direction, it just doesn't even matter. Uh, we got. Wait a second. Oh yeah, so it's this one left. Uh, 
All right, last one. All right, now we'll plug it all again and test one more time. <clears throat> there we go. Power up. No smoke, which is good. Uh modes no no just kidding motors and I understand and give it some power okay all four are spinning now that's going the right direction that's going the right direction that's going the right direction that's going the correct direction woohoo disconnect okay flight controller wired up all four motors are working, and they're all spinning the correct direction. And I don't know, I, th I think this is looking pretty clean, excuse me, so far, uh, which is nice. Um, and that's, that'll help with maintainability in the long run. <clears throat> now, receiver. I need to get a new one, actually. This one has some range issues right now. So we are running SBUS. For our receiver and if you don't know what that is it's a communication protocol that a digital communication protocol um, that you use to uh, communicate between your receiver and your flight controller and your transmitter um, and to do SBUS you only need three wires and that is RC4 which is this port right here power and ground this uh, this is an X4R-SB receiver, um, and it has what's called inverted um, signal, and that's kind of something that um, that's something that uh, FreeSky, who create this receiver, um, have intentionally. Um, only F3 boards can invert it. So what I've done is instead of connecting to this port right here, I've connected it to this port right here which allows me to skip the inversion process and solder it directly to an F1 board. Um, if you don't know more about that, uh, like I said before, check with uh, Oscar Liang's awesome blog post about it. It's where I learned all of the information about um, inversion and all that stuff. <clears throat> the only thing that's tricky with direct soldering your um, only thing that's tricky with direct soldering your uh, receiver is that it's pretty easy to accidentally inverse polarity so just make sure that you're very careful about that so look at that beautiful wired up receiver if we power this up we should see actually I don't know if I can see the LEDs on it yeah they're there you can kind of see it you might be able to see it blinking in there Yeah, you can. Um, so that powered up, but now we've got to go back in and make some software configuration changes to um, make sure that we're allowed to use it. Allowed meaning that the uh, receiver is looking fine. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll go back into clean flight here for you guys. Desktop mode. I say free sky. Uh, okay, so on the configuration tab, let's just go through a bunch more settings here. We need to yaw our flight controller so that it um, is not, so like we said before, it's not pointed forward the way that I have it set up because that's the way that I wanted the pins to be accessible. And so this says roll yaw some degrees to the left. And so I'm going to roll it um, 270 degrees because my front is pointing out towards where yaw would say. So if we set this to 270, it will be pointing the right way forwards. You can also flip it over upside down or roll or whatever you need to do. Um, so I'm just going to save that now. I'm going to set my minimum throttle to 1115. It sounded like um, the multi-rotor mania guys pre-configure these ESCs to 
um, go between 1100 and 15 or and 2000 p uh, ppm sig or pwm signal um, so i want my motors to spin but not take off when i apply throttle and i want the maximum throttle to be all the way to the top so i'm going to go ahead and save that i just kind of click save a bunch of times while i'm going through so i don't forget to save we got motor stop um, before i continue here i need to go over to the ports section and to use um, my X4R-SB as a receiver, I need to enable Serial RX right there. Save and reboot. If I come back into the configuration tab, I will then choose RX Serial from receiver mode instead of PPM or PWM and set SBUS as the receiver um, serial provider. Save. So now that will enable us to communicate between the tran transmitter, receiver, and flight controller. VBAT I'll leave alone, current meter I'm going to leave alone, and then I don't need any of these because I don't have a black box on here, and I don't have any LEDs or anything like that. So, yeah, that's everything we should need from this tab. Now we'll go to the, sure, PID tuning. Um, I use the re rewrite um, PID controller, and I usually set a rate of 0.7 on every single one of these. Um, and I'm gonna leave the PIDs alone for right now because I can use the OSD um, to configure those PIDs once I have gotten in, um, in flight. Well, not in flight, but I don't have to fiddle around with them too much on the computer when I can connect to them there. Okay, so we're done with PID tuning. I just have it set to what I usually use. Um, and I can come in here and I need to set this to JR slash Spectrum slash Gropner, which is the preset for the Free Sky Tyrannus. I also run an RC Expo of 0.9. I actually need to add some to Yaw too, but I don't know what settings I want for that. So save that. Now I'm going to pull out my transmitter, which I should already have bound to this receiver, so I don't need to show you that. And the receiver does not get power, so I'm going to plug in, and we should see connection. So now we've got roll, good, pitch, good, um, yaw, good, oop, it's stick-armed, <laughs> that's funny, throttle, good, aux 2, good, aux 1, good, aux 3, oop, good, okay. So, that's working correctly. I like, so somebody com commented that there's lots of Expo on this. Um, I like it to be a little bit uh, sloshy in the center so that I can make really minor adjustments and then be extreme on the outside edges. So I can kind of have precision or um, speed if I need it. Um, so then we're gonna go to the modes tab. Arm I have on my aux2 channel and I want to arm it with a switch. So flipping the switch will change it to this range of signal and that will arm the quad. Air mode I want to always be on so I'm just going to set it for all of this channel. I feel like Paul never calibrated his gimbals. Paul doesn't even know what that means. And I'm not going to use any of the rest of this so I'm just going to save. Okay, now everything should be set up to actually fly this puppy. So I'm gonna go back to USB. Okay, pull out this guy, pull again this guy. Turn my transmitter back on. Low battery, battery critical, angle mode. So now if I hit my arming switch, which is right here, And then all of that seems to be working all right. All right, on to FPV. I gotta take this flight controller back off because I forgot to do that. Hmm. 
So I'm going to run both my camera and VTX off of um, the 12 volt regulator that's on here. So this comes with this cable. This is the VTX cable. And I need power, ground, signal. The other two are, um, uh, I believe, five, no, audio, out, and ground, which I'm not going to use because I'm never going to use an external mic um, for this VTX. So I'm just going to yoink these guys right out of here. Ugh, come on. Okay, so now it's just video signal, or video signal, ground, and power. If you look at it, you can see that's configured here. Like that. <clears throat> so now, we're going to put voltage out from this pad. We're going to ground voltage on the... Um, uh, OSD. So I want to cut this back a little bit. My VTX is going to be, you know, anywhere in this range. So this will be plenty of wire, probably a little bit extra. <clears throat> and I'm going to strip this back. And strip it out. Sorry, I'm just changing around some settings here on my computer. Okay. 63 people still here. Where's everybody checking in from? I've seen at least a few international guys who are crazy and up way too late. Who else is going to pick up the uh, this kit? I think we should need, need to see some more of these flying around. Because this is an invincible quad that you can take racing and not have to worry about. Well, not invincible, but pretty dang strong. I haven't even released the video that I uh, dropped this thing onto concrete. It was terrifying. Okay, voltage out to my VTX right there. And then I know that the inside pads our ground pads on the power distribution board and uh, the video out is the outside pad and then I know that this pad here you can barely see it the furthest one to the bottom of the OSD is video out so that's what we're gonna wire this to because the video out is what's gonna be sending through to the uh, VTX and uh, punker Brian can correct me on that if I'm wrong, but I'm 90% sure I got that right. Okay, there's that one. And then the ground. Actually, I want to come at it from a different angle here. Sorry, you're probably just looking at my hand right now. Yep, yes you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so we've got the VTX wired to video out, voltage out, and a grounding line. $295 before the discount code. With $25 off, you know, that comes down to $270, and this is this is a great deal for $270. I mean, you think about ready to fly other quad not ready to fly quads, the company, but companies that are ready to fly, um, then uh, you need, you'll be paying easily $500, but you can get a quad like this for, you know, two, 270 bucks at a discount and learn how to build it yourself. You'll have all of these resources to um, get it working right. Um, I need someone to confirm my, uh, power stuff 
Okay, uh, I gotta run upstairs and grab the uh, camera cable. I think I left it up there by accident. Um, so I'll be right back. I think I'm gonna grab a glass of water too. So, five second intermission. Okay, I'm back. A little bit, wa little bit of water from the. Uh, uh, these are cups from like 1970. <laughs> from or 19, 1977, when the uh, quad came out or when the movies came out. <clears throat> All right, so I got I grabbed a cable for the camera, which I just didn't have handy down here. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's plenty of extra. <laughs> okay, so we need to run the camera line up to the front here. And we have a bottom mounted camera, so we've got, you know, we'll need this at the maximum. So we'll cut it right there. I was born in 73, bro. But you probably still didn't, you probably saw at least one of the Star Wars movies when it came out. Hopefully. I saw all of the new ones when they came out. But I'm pretty young, so. <laughs> Star Wars 4, 5, and 6. stripping wires here. I'll like point this down a little bit. <clears throat> My parents claim to fame is that they've seen every single Star Wars and Star Trek movie on opening day, which is pretty cool, I think. But I'm also a huge nerd. Okay, video in. Ground. And power. Hey. <clears throat> Man, I feel old here, sixty nine. Hey, I'm so glad that you're uh, checking this out. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm 24 <laughs> and you can already see my hair starting to disappear when I bend over. What the heck? This, this ground cable came off on me.
Oh my goodness, I hate these wires sometimes. There we go. So the ground wire for my OSD connection came off for some reason. Um, all right. So we've got the camera line running forward. Should be enough room there. VTX line running back. I slap this monstrosity over the top. Put this underneath like that. I'll screw it in with these easy fatty standoffs here. Plug in the OSD. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have our FPV system wired up. VTX is here, camera's here, receiver is already hooked on. Um, the first thing I want to do always is check polarity. So I'm going to plug this in now before I plug in my expensive FPV gear. Pull out the multimeter. So we're expecting uh, 15 or no 12 volts on the VTX line here, and we get 12 volts exactly. And we also expect the same on the camera line. Which we get. All right. Good. Actually, let me make sure I got the polarity right. I had them backwards. Okay, that's good. All right, we're good. So we can hook up our FPV kit. So on this end, we've got our HS1177. And on this side, our modified VTX, which I'm plugging in upside down. And we want an antenna. <clears throat> okay. So now we should be good. This is another chance for magic smoke. Three, two, one, none. VTX did power on. Um, I'm just going to use my goggles to test this right now, which are upstairs. One sec. Grab my goggles. Powering up. We're on the wrong channel. And I'm not seeing an OSD for some reason at all. That's really interesting. <clears throat> so I wasn't getting any anything from the OSD actually which is really interesting so 
I'm just double checking my wiring here. The video was coming through fine, but there was no, no OSD information displayed whatsoever. I don't know what would cause that. So it did have LEDs, so it was powered up. Oh, you know what? I've got that whole thing backwards. No kidding. So I have my entire OSD wired totally backwards. I'm glad that didn't blow up on us. How not to install an OSD with Boba Fett FPV? Okay. Wait, no, I did have that right. What the heck? Ah. Yeah. This one to this one. Ugh, this is why you do this before you hook up all the motor wires. That's good. That's good. It's this one. And then this one. Still no OSD. That's really interesting. Man, even when I cycle power. Well, I'll leave that to troubleshoot later. The I still have good video signal, but the OSD is like there's no overlay at all. Uh, yes, it is a homemade antenna. That's really weird. Anyway, I'm just going to investigate that a little bit further um, in my own time. Because I, I know that this OSD works fine. I just, uh, I, we, did, we did it on the live stream not that long ago. 
Um, so it, it should be just fine, but something's awry right now. And uh, so if, you, if you're more interested in learning how to correctly wire an OSD, um, you know, just go ahead and check out the previous um, live stream about it. Very, very, very easy to do. When you're not a fool like me. Not sure exactly what happened, but that's fine. It's easy. It's an easy swap. Okay. So I'm just putting these guys down on my OSD, so, or my flight controller, so that it's locked in, ready to go. It would say no data. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Flight controller locked in. Um, for receiver, I kind of do this lazy thing where I just mount it on top of my um, flight controller with Velcro. You're doing RX to TX and TX to RX. Yes, that is correct. I did double check that. But even if I had done that, it would at least show no data, which it does not. So something else is wrong to where it doesn't have... You don't have video in and out switched, do you? I don't think so, but I can double check that. I mean, would we even get video if that was the case? Fortunately, it's time for me to run. Uh, see you later. Thanks for stopping by. Um, let me double, I can double check it. Okay. Video in is on the inside, which I believe I did. So if I move this out of the way, video in is running through to the camera. If I give this a tug, yes. Video in is on the inside, and video out is on the outside. So it does follow that schematic. So, eh, that's probably something stupid I did. But uh, we'll have to figure something out with that. Mr. Jordan Tempkin, welcome. Glad you could make it. Mr. Naka Laka Raka Laka Rala Laka Raka Laka. Yeah, he's making fun of my last name, which is Nurkula. It's not that hard. Actually, it is probably that hard. It's a weird name. Stupid weird name. And just go boop. Easy. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm trying to do gay Velcro. This will give me a chance to try out the uh, micro minim OSD instead of this big one. Nurkala. And boop. There we go. Less gay uh, Velcro now. Okay. Cool. So now let's put some standoffs in. <clears throat> Big whoop in the house, exactly. Who invited them? I have to go eat, be back later. See ya. Big whoop, you've been out flying? Did you just get back? I'm not really here, what does that mean? Yes, sir. 
I'm jealous. I got a half a battery in today, but it was too wet and scary, and I had to prepare for this live stream. But I've put in like 40 packs this week, so I'm pretty happy actually. Oh, are you still down in Arizona? I didn't think you'd be there that long. That's awesome. I'm so jealous. All right, we're getting pretty close to the maiden hover test, just so you guys know. Okay, VTX coming out the back, camera going out the front, receiver wires kind of coming up the sides here. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is uh, put the side plates on my camera, um, for which I've got to find some camera screws. This is not. Here's one. Is one right of these stripped out? That one's a little stripped. There's another one. That looks good. Okay. So let's make sure that we got this orientation right. So this needs to kind of like lean backwards. And I've found that using the back set of holes on here works a little bit better for me. Um, to gets, gets you a little bit more um, camera angle. Uh, so we need the bottom. And then you should be able to click this on top a little bit, drop the screw in, and then cinch it down. If only the HS1177 screws weren't a total pain in the keister. <sighs> okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Camera plugged in, mounted. Sometimes the uh, plates don't mount totally correctly, but once you start fiddling with them, they'll usually drop in the place just fine. Some of that has to do, actually most of it has to do with the uh, 1177 screws, um, but it's, uh, I've found that it's a fairly self-correcting problem, <clears throat> so not to worry.
There we go. Perfect. Okay, now the only other thing that we'll want to think about now is VTX mounting. Is this a single plate bottom? Yes, it is. It's a one big four millimeter plate that actually happens to be pretty light for what it is. So, okay, do that. Okay, need a little bit of Velcro again. I love Velcro. It is tough as hell. And you can have it right now for a nice cheap price. So go buy the kit. I would buy this if I uh, didn't need it or if I needed it. It's a good, good, very good beginner kit. Very good intermediate kit too, actually. I'll be flying this for sure. Okay, so I put the VTX in and I also put the Velcro on and I need it to go right there. So now with this mini pigtail, you know, this thing is on here now. There's no stress on the VTX. All of the stress is taken by the carbon fiber and you're not going to be able to break um, anything and you're you still have access to the button which is right here and uh, everything's great so I mean you're well set which pros fly it ah, dang it Crikey. What batteries did you buy? He says, my wife will be pissed if I order more quad parts while I'm gone. Uh, I just had eight batteries show up at the door and she wasn't pleased. Yeah, I want to know what batteries you got. That's hilarious. Now the VTX is awesomely locked in there. Gosh. So all we have to do is hook this guy up there. Flip it over. And with a little bit of luck. Voila. some screws in here. I like to start with the front one so that the plate continues to be locked. Aliens are too heavy for racing quads. Forgot to paint the edges orange. Oh, this is a green quad. This is my, this is gr this is the Green Machine 4.0. Actually, that is legitimately my goal for this. I might actually paint the orange the edges again because I want to have my Green Machine back. Okay, look at that. There's so much extra room in there. There's a full size OSD, VTX, receiver, NAS, or sorry, Dragonfly 32, 
power distribution board, good clean wiring. No, none of that's in the way, so that's a great start. <clears throat> I'll show you guys how I've been doing my zip ties, or my antennas too. So Joshua Bardwell recently put out a, a video about um, antenna mounting and kind of complained about how a lot of people are setting up their antennas right now. Um, and so I've been trying to follow his advice on that. Um, here's my green strap. Need some green aluminum standoff screws. They're, they're green. Should have done this before I put it on. My fingers are just too fat to fit in there. There we go. So I've been trying to find a good way to protect my antennas and get good signal strength and clarity. Um, and Joshua Bardwell was complaining that everybody let their uh, signals, uh, their uh, D, uh, free sky wires just kind of dangle. And um, it was causing, it should be, it is causing performance problems um, that, and so he kind of suggested some alternative measures, um, and that's what I've been kind of doing on my own builds. So I want to show you kind of how I've been doing that. Um, so I got these zip ties on here, and I've got here some nice, small, hopefully I have some green still, green heat shrink. And what I'm going to do is cut the most, the smallest amount possible to be able to run this wire up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the zip tie right at the top here with the, uh, I don't see my angle cutters here. like that and then you can put this inside of the heat shrink make sure that doesn't get bent over and just cut off that little bit of heat shrink which we're going to be able to heat gun on so it'll end up something like that and so now this is nice and rigid. It's not, these zip ties are nice and bendy so they don't break. And it's actually going to be underneath the battery, or the height of it is going to be underneath the battery, protecting it from uh, being damaged. Um, so all we need to do, bear with me one second. Yeah, I kind of, uh, I got the, the wires on the outside of the standoff by accident, so I'm just going to take this off real quick. Just try to lift it up. Just scoot it under there. Okay, that's better. So I like to leave that a little bit long so that um, 
I have more if I need it, uh, but it should not be cut this way. So once again, we'll get the same length over here. Now, this is an 1800, which I would never fly on this, but so you can see how that still protrudes over the top of the battery, and um, but when you crash, it's going to help prevent it from breaking too badly if possible, if it does. So that's just, just nice and sweet. <clears throat> Let's see, what's next? I have another... Uh... Where is okay. I'll just put this one on here for no, I'm gonna use this one. So I wouldn't and I'm not not normally gonna use this uh, antenna with a right angle on it. Um but that's just what I have handy here, so I'm gonna use it. Okay. So, what the heck? Video system, check. That's nice and protected in there. If you hit dead on, you might hit some. You might get the camera a little bit, um, but chances are you're not going to be able to hit it that perfectly. Um, and then this guy. Is there and that's all looking great so let's put some props on this and hover test I'm not gonna put these HQs on because if for whatever reason I do crash it in here or there's some troubleshooting I don't want to waste the expensive props um, just because I like I like my expensive props <clears throat> so I'm just going to drop a set of Dal V2s on it for now. I didn't even charge up a 1300, so hopefully I've got something sitting around. Let's see, how low is this? Okay, whatever, we'll just do it. So the battery fits in there real nice and snug. Um, And I did not make this long enough. That's funny. So normally I make this a little bit longer. So like here on this other build, um, what happens is that this wire stands out the back like this. And so when you cinch the battery down, it cinches it like that. I need to lengthen this um, XT60 lead. So we're just going to kind of jerry-rig it for now. Um, but that's, I, and you don't have to run it out the side. That's just the way that I've kind of been doing it for a few builds. Um, and I like it. So that's just, that's just the way that I've done it here. 
Um, so I'm just going to It's just not quite long enough. Eh, maybe it'll work. This is what happens when you recycle stuff. So that'll plug in like that. <clears throat> eh, that's funny. <laughs> good eye. That's impressive. I mean, it would still fly. It just wouldn't be good. That's really funny. Hey, at least it wasn't backwards. It's just upside down. There we go. Okay. Let's do a hover test. <clears throat> it's kind of messy down here, I apologize. This is my crotch. <clears throat> All right, always turn your radio on first. Or try to. hover test on a four cell battery <laughs> um, and I have my <clears throat> holy shit the quad is running away safety blanket right here ready to throw over it if something does go horribly wrong <clears throat> now I'm gonna back up a little bit okay it arms it doesn't seem like damp light is on on those two it seems. Just want to make sure this thing's not, not in the way. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I wonder if we have the flight controller direction reversed. And that's why we keep the uh, um, backups around, or the blanket. <clears throat> wow, look at that. We smashed a dowel prop in half. <laughs> oh, lordy, that was a little terrifying. <laughs> I love watching you guys. Oh my gosh. Do not even know where those props ended up. Uh. And that. <laughs> Best maiden ever. I don't know. My previous one was a little bit worse, I think. It was not the upside down. Well, no, I, sw I swapped the prop. I think I think I have the yaw direction the wrong way or something. Hmm. 
Voting for a hand launch on the next attempt. <laughs> I love it. Just retry? Why would I retry? Must have been a coincidence. <laughs> you jerk. Wait, so... The USB comes off the left side, which means forwards is that direction. And the configuration says go down to the left. What? That doesn't make any sense. All right, I'm gonna turn the accelerometer back on. This it should be 270, not 90. Yeah, I'm turning on the accelerometer. Hold on. Uh, I don't want to just try 90. I want to know that 90 is the right way. Okay. So, calibrate accelerometer reset Z axis. So if I tilt forward, it's going backwards. If I tilt backwards, it's going forward. Okay, so... <clears throat> I need to switch this to 90 degrees, I guess, despite my better sense. Go back into the setup tab, reset Z axis, forward is forward, backward is backward, left, right. Okay. All right. We're good. This time it'll work. I promise. Configuration. Loop time, back down to 500, save, everything turned off, okay, disconnect. I don't know, I, I looked at the directions, I looked at the way that it, the arrow points in clean flight, I'm 90% sure I did it the right way, but... I don't know. Guess not. It's funny. But that's why I take safety measures. <laughs> and don't fly inside like an idiot. But this makes for better TV, I think. <laughs> okay, radio is still on. Loss of fingers in three, two, one. Okay. All right. Here we go again.
Yeah, it's a messy. Mess, mess, mess. <laughs> do a flip? No. <laughs> I, I can't do it in that tight of a space. Though I have. Yeah, it was the the uh, rotation was backwards, I guess. I, I managed to broke a freaking Dal V2 prop. Pretty impressive. Okay, and then the other, only other thing that I want to mention is uh, because I am absolutely in love with it. This is my pre-built one. Uh, Multi-Rotor Mania sells this cool, awesome TPU Chiami Yi mount. Um, I thought I saw it here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. And it just kind of it, it wedges right into this thing, and it's not going to go anywhere at all. Like, it is totally locked in. I have my own, like, face plate protection thing for it um, that I use, so I actually modified it to put the strap on the other side. Um, I don't have that thing handy. Let me see. I've got some spares. Um, and I can, this one doesn't have any glass in it, um, but I have, I will, I, c I can mount a piece of Lexan to the front of it, and it kind of becomes this layer lens-like thing, and then it straps into the quad like this and it's just not going to go anywhere. And then with a 1300 mAh battery, <clears throat> it fits on just like that. You know, plug in, the VTX antenna will fit out just fine behind it. Um, and you've got, you know, it's just this perfect size for, you know, doing filming. And I am considering this a, a basher quad because it's just unbelievably strong. And uh, it's so easy to film with because the camera is just locked in place. I don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, I love it. But yeah, I, got, I have another one for this, but I just don't have it down here with me. Um, so I just kind of thought I'd show you it mounted up. Um, but yeah, it's sweet. Uh, but yeah, so this is the build. Got everything in there pretty nice and clean. I mean, there's some extra wiring, but, you know, something plenty I'm willing to compromise on. Um, get that power distribution board nice and low. Um, but yeah, I, I think this thing is looking pretty, pretty darn good, if I don't say so myself. But yeah, um, I'll reset mic again. Okay, Mike should be back up. Let me know if it's any good. <clears throat> but yeah, so this is the um, multi rotor mania, uh, uh, <laughs> the MRM two twenty five. It fits five point five inch props, none of which I have right now, unfortunately. Unfortunately, um, it's got uh, Zeus twenty amp ESCs um, that come pre flash with all of the settings that you want. It's got uh, the twenty three hundred or 2204 by 2300 kV micro titans, uh, or mini titans, um, HS 1177 camera, uh, an F1 flight controller for the Dragonfly 32, X4 RSB. They have an awesome power distribution board that I'm in love with right now. Um, you've got a 400 milliwatt VTX, um, and I, I think it comes with antennas. No, maybe not. I don't think so. Um, and uh, I, I'm using a micro... Um, uh, no, sorry, just a minimum OSD, and uh, I, I can't be happier with it. Once again, I fly this one over here, which is built almost identically um, with just different electronics, or some different electronics. Um, I've got the same ESCs. I've got a F3 flight controller, um, but the same VTX and camera and batteries and props and all that stuff, and it, it is awesome. Oh, let's do a wait while we're here. Um, so my build uses, um, <clears throat> where is it? My build uses uh, 2204 Sunny Skies, which are pretty stinking light. Um, so that's kind of, there is a slight unfair comparison, but this will make up for it because uh, this has the Yi mount on it, whereas the new one here doesn't yet. Um, but it should be pretty close.
So my build is 324 grams um, with this Yi mount on it. That adds like 18 grams or so. Um, and I have a bunch of extra straps and all that stuff. It probably is the it's probably in the 330 range with um, with an antenna on it. Uh, and again, remember that's with a freaking um, four millimeter bottom plate, so it's going to take a absolute beating. And then finally, this is the new one, 319 grams, all up. So you know you're only. 40, 50 grams heavier than some of the ultralight X quads. Um, but it's, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, but so with, uh, this 1300 milliamp tattoo and tattoos are in the mid range weight spectrum. Where is it? God dang it. What did I do with it? In the mid range weight spectrum, these tattoos, um, and so you're looking at 475 all up flying. So that's not bad at all. But this is something that I would not hesitate to take to a race um, just because it's, uh, I mean, it's light, it's durable. I'm not going to worry about breaking it while I'm racing. I can just go all out. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a good quad. It's a great quad. So with this and with the Yi, you're still 550. So that's not bad at all. So that, ladies and gentlemen, has been the uh, Multi-Rotor Mania 225 build. This is fantastic. Once again, if you use the promo code BulbaFed, F-P-V-B-O-L-B-U-F-E-T, which isn't on this page apparently, um, if somebody wants to put it in the chat for me, uh, you can get 25% off, or sorry, <laughs> $25 off this kit, which is going to be um, you know, a perfect uh, balance between durability, lightweight, um, and functional. You can use different size props and, uh, you know, have a really good time with it. So, um, thank you again to Multirotor Mania for sponsoring this live stream. It's, uh, obviously it's always a blast to be here kind of wrecking my wall and all of that stuff. Don't tell my wife. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it's so fun. So thank you very much everybody for stopping by, uh, go check out Multirotor Mania, pick up some gear, uh, pick up this kit. Um, and, uh, Stay flying. Have a good night.